today, people, the video today is about the fact that the uh, history is not as old as we are made to believe it is. And I'm showing you today that the stuff that is in the Bible is as fresh as less than 300 years old. Less than 300, I repeat that. Because these things that I'm going to show you now, they are so fresh that Msinisi did not die more than three years ago, 300 years ago. Okay, so he probably died in 18 something or 17 something, definitely not a thousand years ago, like um, the history tells us. So this video today, I'm showing you things that are really proving to you that these things, uh, all the biblical stuff is as fresh as possible and showing you that this thousand years ago thing that we told history and since he came or savior or some call it Jesus, I hate that Jesus name. Is a thousand years old thing history? No, it's not. So I'm going to show you now the fresh things that are in the Bantu areas and Bantu communities. They are doing and they are so fresh. Not the, a thousand years ago or something. Okay, let me start with this one. The book of life. The book of life that we hear about in the book of Revelations 20, for example. And I mean, I think Daniel even talked about it. But the fact is, there's this book that is going to be used on Judgment Day where it's going to be opened and anyone who's written in that book, okay, will be saved. So that means it belongs to the family of Msindis, all right? So now, this book of life is something that is still in there, it still exists. I mean, I'm not even 50 years old. I'm, I'm not even close to that. But I, I can tell you, I saw this book and my parents as well. So, I mean, we're using this book in their age group. So, you understand that this book of life is there. I mean, you can even ask your grandparents to show you this. I mean, in the Bantu Kosa, as well as the Kosa communities, because they were still using this book of life. They were still using it in the 19-somethings. I mean, after even Mandela was out. After 1994, they were still using it in the villages as a, a form of ID until the government started complaining that y'all need to use the current ID now. Stop using this book of life. So this book of life, as I'm showing you there, that's the same one that Msindisi was carrying around. Now, if this was a thousand years old, there's no way Msindisi was still carrying the book of life around because if you want to know more about what this book of life is about, I'm covering, I've got a separate video where I'm covering this book of life. I'm saying the lamb still got his book of life. That's the title of the of the um, video on here on YouTube in my channel. You can find it there. So, but here I'm just trying to show you that this book of life, I'm seeing this was walking, carrying around, and they are referring to him. They are referring to Revelation to, that he's still gonna come back, open it, and 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 Sonini, the father, is still gonna validate the people in his family using the same book because the book of life was where each head of the family was carrying a list was all the list of the family members of that head of household was written their names were, were written in that book of life to say so now when the king is supposed to do accounting of how many people or whoever in the in each and every family then it's no longer now the lining up like in the olden days where they line up and they count them one by one by head like in joshua in them's time no it was now like simpler where they take that book of life and because now they okay let me finish the book of life so take that book of life and give it to the king the king counts the people in the book of life all right, to see, okay, this is how, how many people you got in your family, and then move on to the next book of life person. So now it was easier. So the Greeks, they really, you know, they came and helped a bunch of people back in the day to say, okay, you can do it better this way, you can do it better. I mean, it was, they made life easier. So because they introduced this book of life. All right. So you have to understand that this, this is fresh. I mean, I'm trying to show you a whole lot of things. Even here, here's an article that shows it's in South Africa. This article was done in 19, uh, actually not in 19, in 2003. Let me see if I can see it correctly because this thing is too small now today. You can see the year this was done in. Fresh in the 2000s. 2000, I think 2003 or 2000 something like that. You can look at there. And this article is fresh. 2004, June. Yeah, that's where it was done. This article is totally fresh. And you tell me this book of life was abolished 10,000, whatever, 1,000 years ago. No, Cindy was using this. And an article that still says, refers to people that many still using the book of life and don't pass. Make many people still using the book of life to, to I mean, especially in the villages where they got to get the, the um, they call it gum gum. It's, 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 uh, um, it's what the olden days, um, the, hold on, the old people, 
the olden like the olden people get the um the money from the government, the grants and whatever from the government. A pension they call it but they call it gum gum. Income tax, but they just call it gum gum. So that's how they get the gum gum, okay? Which is income tax. So they gotta produce an ID and then but then they still use the book of life. So in two thousand four the government complained that they gotta get the latest ID. So this book of life is still up and running up in there. All right. Now here's another thing I want to show. The Capernaum, the Capernaum. Do you remember now the other video I was showing you that the Cape Town, what's called now Cape Town, is what was called Capernaum back in the days, right? So I'm even showing. I mean, this is fresh. Cape Town is still called Cape Town to this day. The Capernaum, they try to blend it in there, but Cape Town is still called Cape Town, all right? So and that's where Msindisi was. There it is. That's where Msindisi lived, right? Before he in his last days, that's where it is, Cape Town. That's the, right there. It's still existing, and they're still the big and fishing over there. There, that's the city where Msindis and his twelve lived. There, right there, you can see it, and it's now also called Cape of Good Hope. What's that hope for? Cape of Good Hope, because that's where Msindis moved from the village that he was living in, where he was born and stuff. The the, the Bethlehem and, and Nazareth. He lived. He left all those villages and went to the city, just like how Mandela did it. You can see more detail in my other video. So when Msindisi left the villages and went to minister in the people who were lost in the city of Cape Town. So he lived there in his la until he left. They trying to minister to those people so they can understand the, the roots, the culture, because they were starting to lose it. If you could see the people of Cape Town. So you can actually read, see yourself. Cape of Good Hope, Good Hope. He brought them hope since he was bringing it. It's still called Cape of Good Hope today. Kapalo Dumo, Dumo, Cape of Good Hope. That's what it's called today. You tell me, since that's a thousand year old hope that he gave them? No, it's not a thousand years old. You can actually see. I mean, even the Robin Island, the island where um, Lhanyan, which is John. John, uh, Johann, but they call him Johann, John, the, uh, not the Baptist, John, one of the 12 apostles. That's where he was, um, he was in prison. That's the island, Robin Island. It's, it's, a, it's not too far from Cape Town. It's right close to Cape Town over there. If you visit Cape Town, you, you take a, a ship, it's cheap, take a ship to Robin Island. I think it's about 30 rand, which is almost like $3 or $5. So you just go there to Robin Island, take a ship and go there, visit. So you'll, you'll see that this Robin Island and Cape Town, because now Cape Town was, um, Cape Town was where he was, since he lived in his final days with his 12. Now they captured John, they started persecuting the 12 in that Cape Town. So where they were living in, and then they started getting John and putting him in that Robin Island. So you can actually see that this history is circling around the, the last days history, last days on Sinisi. That's where it is. Robin Island right there. If you want to know more about the Robin Island, I've got a separate video covering all this stuff. Okay. If you browse through my channel, you see all these videos talking about this stuff. In that same Robin Island, there's a big old sign over there. That's Robin. This, this, this is a picture I took from Robin Island. It says erected in the year of our Lord, Lord, 1841. This, this right there, it probably was placed after Mrs. died, 1841. So they say in the year of our, so he probably put that stone over there when they started persecuting all. So in that same year, Msindisi died, that's the same year they started persecuting the 12 apostles and eventually captured John and put him in that prison. So that's probably one of them followers of Msindisi said, okay, this was, you know, he put that thing in there. You, you can, I mean, this is, this is definitely the year of our Lord is never a thousand years old. Never thought, 1841, that's when the thing was put in that Robin Island. You tell me a thousand years old? No, no, ain't no way. No, uh -uh. Here's another one. Remember I was talking about Kumcha, 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 right? So Kumcha, the name, they changed it to King Williamstown. So that people don't know about Kumcha. I'll tell you why they did that just now. I've covered it in another video, but I'll still talk about it again. So this King Williams, they talk, talk, call it King Williamstown today, but in the villages, it's still called Kumcha. The olden people still call it Kumcha. And I was there and I heard people still calling it Kumcha. And you tell me that's a thousand year old Kumcha thing? No, it's not a thousand years old. Look, what, why is important that the Kumcha thing be changed? Because now they're trying to hide the history. So y'all 
don't know about this Kumcha thing. So the Kumcha text, because now them scrolls were all housed in Kumcha. The ancient scrolls of our forefathers, they were all housed in Kumcha. I think that was more like a headquarters or whatever. So Kumcha was where them scrolls were kept, I think. So, but all the, the, the Bible, the, the ancient Bible, the first production of the Bible was produced in Kumcha. So that's where all these deliberations, discussions and everything were done. And then whatever transpired as a result of those discussions about the scripture was called Kumchen text. So that's why they even have an, a forum or organization. They call it Ancient Jews um, Forum. Or, or, or So that is responsible for the writing of the scripture, of the ancient Jews scripture in Kumcha. They call it Kumchen because it comes from Kumcha. It's a Kumchen scripture or Aramaic texts. That's Aramaic is Bantu, okay? Aramaic, they call it Aramaic. I don't know why they call it Aramaic? But Aramaic text, Kumcha, all right? There you go, you see it. They, they change it kilometer, but people still call it Kumcha today. Why? Because it's not a thousand year old history. It's a recent thing, and the, the name of that city is still fresh in people's mind, Kumcha. That's when they started producing them. I mean, if, it, if all these events since he died and everything happened a thousand years ago, why did they wait until 1833 to start deliberating and producing the, the, um, the new version of the Bibles? Why? Why, why, why did they? 1833 and then 1859, they started producing the new one. After since he died, and then they started pro trying to produce the new stuff that were rejected. And eventually, in 1975, there was a, a compromise that was reached, but not fully accepted. But why, why all in the 18th, 19th? It means that's when everything started happening. Now you, you can, and this is from a Bible society. Kumchen stuff. I mean, you, you see, I mean, this, I've covered a, a lot of detail about the Kumcha thing in the, in the video I titled Bible Closest to Original Scrolls. You can read more and, and see, watch more and get more information in there. Okay? So here's another one. I mean, I got a whole lot of things that just show this thing ain't thousand years old. Sinisi was here, 12 apostles, everything, less than 300 years ago. Okay? Less than. Now, look at this here. I mean, the rhymes, I mean, I've showed you the rhymes. The rhymes that we were singing, I was a kid. We were singing, and that's not even 50 years old. That's not even anywhere close to 50. People still sing, even them kids still singing this stuff today. And this stuff is stuff that is happening, is foreseeing the future. These are not old stuff, a thousand year old stuff. This stuff that's being sung now, and these things are prophesying the things that's happening right now. But now them kids are made to sing the stuff. They, they don't know what they're singing. There's just songs that they're singing. But Sonini always use music and songs to keep things going in the people's brains for generations to come. So that's how you keep the information in the, in the nation through a song. Right, so these songs are sung by the kids in the Bantu villages and Bantu cities, the, the Bantu people. Sing the songs. If you want to know more about the songs, you'll see the um, the title Bantu Rhymes, um, Bantu Songs or whatever. you find it in my channel you, to know more about these songs. But I just showed you that these are the songs that are prophesying things and they are being sung even today. Not a thousand year old songs. All right. Here's another one. Here's another one. Another one. This is Tzitza, about the Tzitza. Remember Tzitza? Tzitza is the border that was put between Benjamin and Judah. As you see, First Samuel, okay, Rahel's tomb in Benjamin, at the border of Benjamin, it's and Zelda. They try to scram it, Zelda, Zelda. Zelda. That's it's called Zelda today, all right? It's there, right there. I've got a separate video showing even this one right here, but I'm showing you here. I'm pulling it up so you can see. This is Zelda. Zelda. It was a border, and I remember it is a border. Okay, this, there was a tzitzah border, you have to show a, 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 okay, the parents now, the parents had to show, a, probably it was the book of life in the, in the time, because there was no, the ID that's used today. So it was probably the book of life or something that they showed, and then you, and you, you got to write the list of the, your kids in that book. So, and then you show in the border, and then you can pass the border. So that's the border. Tzitzah, I remember tzitzah border very clear, and everybody else can, I mean, even in, in um, in um, Wikipedia, it's written, it used to be a border between, there it is, you can see it, let me, let me just make it bigger, you can see this is Wikipedia, I'll make it bigger for you, there it is, that line, Tzitzah used to be from part of the western border of former Transkei, now Tzitzah is a popular place for a while, but it used to be a western border, 
and I remember it being a border. And the, um, the Bible talks about it as a border. And you tell me this is a thousand year old border? No, there ain't no way that. I mean, here's another something interesting whilst we're on this page. Here, that river coming from pots and joints. If you can see what that pots and joints at the bottom there, and then the river goes and then divides into four. Don't that remind you of Genesis, Genesis where there's a river in the Garden of Eden, that river, and then it breaks into four? into four rivers. I mean, I've got a video covering that part. Do I never know? No stones unturned. So I just, you know, wanted to bring this to your attention to show you that that probably is, but, you know, I wasn't talking about this in this video, but I, it just struck my mind that actually, you know, that's the, if you look at that Parson Jones, that's a typical Eden look. It looks like the Eden in the Bible, that Parson Jones at the bottom there. And then the Bible talks about that river breaks into four. But anyway, that's that's not the point in this video here. You can look in my channel, you find where I'm talking about this river here and the, the names and whatever and, the, and they show you pictures of the Pats and Johns and everything else. And you can see this is actually what was called Eden Nain. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. So this thing ain't no thousand years old at all. There's Tzitza. Tzitza. It was a border. Tzitza still was a border and I remember it as a border. And then it only stopped being a border a, a couple of years ago. A couple of years. And when I was still a kid, it was still a border. So please, this not thousand years ago old thing. It was still there. Anyway, I gotta run now. So there you go. Thousand year old thing. History is bogus. So get the right stuff. Bye.